Praise the Lord. We bring you greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We greet you all uh, from the church Living Hope Tabernacle in Delhi and in Noida. God bless you all. Amen. Let's read one verse from the Bible. Psalm 127 verse 1. Psalm 127 verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of your grace, Lord. Have mercy upon us. Let your grace be with us, O God. Give us an ear to hear your word and listen to your word and obey your word, O Father God. Let your name alone be magnified, O Father. Lord, whatever we do, Lord, whatever we hear, Lord, whatever we obey, Lord, let us do it everything for your glory alone. Help us. Those who are hearing this message, those who are watching over it, Lord, help us, O Father, to obey your word and discern it, O Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, the word of God says in Psalms 127 verse 1, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. In the book of Ecclesiastes, King Solomon expresses the importance of realizing that life is empty and meaningless without God. Life is empty and meaningless without God. The wisest, richest and most powerful man, king of that time, at all he had learned, King Solomon, accomplished and gained. He said it was all pointless without God. Of course. Amen. Amen. In the Old Testament times, we could see many kings, Jew or a Gentile, they built many palaces, houses and kingdoms, they built it. Today we are going to concentrate on a one woman who built three cities for God. Amen. Building a house in this high-tech era is a you know huge task. It's not at all an easy thing. That's why we are... All people looking forward to buy a finished houses from the builders, right? So that's why there are so many builders in our nation, in our cities. But in the Old Testament time, where there is no such so-called high-tech missionaries or uh, tools available, but this woman, she built three cities for, for his generations, for his people. So, uh, she, this person is none other than Shira. She was the descendant of Ephraim. She is Shira. It's written in 1 Chronicles chapter 7 verses 20 to 24. If we read through it, we could find out who is this Shira. So her, names, her name means, you know, remnant. It means remnant, a remaining uh, or blood relative. Be a remnant to be a small but perpetually surviving portion of a family. This woman, whose story most of us do not know, she dared to dream in a way that she blessed her future generations. Amen. Okay, let's read from 1 Chronicles chapter 7 verses 20 to 24. The descendants of Ephraim, she, she was the descendant of Ephraim. So the descendant of Ephraim, uh, Suthela buried his son, Tahath his son, Eliad his son, Tahath his son, Zafbad his son, and Suthela his son. Ezer and Eliad were killed by the native born men of Gath when they went down to seize their livestock. Their father Ephraim mourned for them many days and his relatives came to comfort him then he made love to his wife again and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son he named him Baraya because there had been misfortune in his family 
His daughter was Shira who built lower and upper Beth Horon as well as Usain Shira. Amen. So she built total in three cities upper Beth Horon and lower Beth Horon and Usain Shira. These are the three cities she built it in. This is very awesome and wonderful in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So she was a descendant from Ephraim. Uh, Ephraim who was the son of Joseph. We all know that jo who, uh, who was Joseph. He was the one who sold out by his own brothers to Egypt. And he became the next man to the king in the land of Egypt. So this person, this Joseph's son, Ephraim's son Beriah. Beriah's uh, daughter is the Shira. Okay. So when tragedy struck in Ephraim's family, the whole generation of the family, maybe more, were murdered by the men of God because of the choices they made. That is, the men of God who were born in that land killed them, killed the uh, many family members of Ephraim's. Why? Because they came down to take away their cattle. So that is why this has happened. Maybe children, their grandchildren and perhaps great grandchildren were wiped out of that family. Ephraim's genealogy. So the death of his descendants devastated Ephraim and his remaining family came to comfort him. Then later on we could see he and his wife, you know, they want to uh, bear more children and uh, we build their family once again. So God blessed them and his wife, Ephraim's wife, bore a son and they called him Bariah and his daughter is named Shira. As we already seen, Shira, the name means remnant, right? Okay. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1 says, the wise woman builds her house. The wise woman builds her house. In 1 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 24, just now we read it. This daughter Shira, she built lower and upper Beth Horon and Usain Shira. Three cities she built. See, our patriarchal culture, if you look for it, like Abraham, uh, Jacob, Isaac, after Jacob, uh, Joseph and uh, you know his, his brothers, they are all nomadic people. They are the tent livers. They dwell in the tent. So in that generation, Shira was born. Where did she get or how or what motivated Shira to build the cities? That too, it's not a normal one. It's a fortified cities. Amen. And fortified cities in a very strategic location. Wow. That's really superb. Right? We don't know really what motivated her. Because she never had a background of uh, her fathers or forefathers uh, living in a, you know, the permanent houses. But she came up with a new idea. Maybe her family never accepted it. Maybe her friends uh, might have, you know, uh, fun of her. What do you think? What are you doing? Can you do it? Are you crazy? There, she might have come across so many huddles and obstacles. It might not be an easy thing for Shira to build the cities. But what happened? She stayed focused. Amen. Hallelujah. She might have heard so many stories from the fathers that how the local people, the Gath, the people of Gath, you know, destroyed the family just because they are nomadic people. She might have prayed to God. God might have given her, you know, the dream to build the fortified cities or God might have given her a vision and she dared to dream to build a fortified cities. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She built for her generations to be blessed. She built so that her generations to be, 
you know in a safe place she became ultimately an instrument in the hand of god when she built those three cities hallelujah dear people of god today our call might not be to build the cities but definitely you and i are called to build the kingdom of god in this earth shira might have faced so many obstacles so many hurdles even from her own family but she never distracted away from her vision she never distracted away from her dreams she never want to compromise she always want to accomplish amen hallelujah hallelujah today may the lord speak to you for the purpose for the vision that god has called you for his kingdom never be distracted away from it stay focused because he is going to with you and he is going to bless you as he did for shira amen let's look back into shira's things how did she build that how did shira become a city builder wow she became a city builder maybe it was her a childhood dream she want to build the cities and she did it because she was focused stay focused in her vision what i am thinking is she might be heard from her you know uh, her great great grandfather joseph how god used him in the gentile land to be a blessing to his own family to his own brothers and how god lifted him into a high position next to a king in the land of egypt so this might be given her a mental support this might be given her a faith to stay focused in her vision and she trusted god more than her own power because no one can especially as uh, women in those time it's impossible for her to accomplish those you know visions comes true but by god because god is with her and she did it she built all those three cities amen she had a dream she had a plan she had a vision she had a calling she had a commission she was born to do it do that work it was in her bones it was in her blood even it was in her heart and even in her hands did it matter if nobody else understood your plan your dream your vision because god is with you amen hallelujah like shira every one of us every woman called by god to do a particular unique work in his kingdom to build the people for the lord's kingdom to build the families for the lord's kingdom to build your children for the lord's kingdom to build your husband for the lord's kingdom amen hallelujah to build your immediate family make them stand make them focused on the vision that god has given amen she had planned her work very nicely it's not a one man army to do the to build the cities she might have need a team many architects many many people but she never went back she moved forward always amen because god has put that plan in her heart we could read in the new old testament that noah built an ark he had his own family all the three children and their wives of their three sons and his own wife they all they were all there but when we read about shira 
the verse didn't say who were with her it just said like shira built three cities amen i could see shira is a woman of proverbs 31 in proverbs 31 verse 17 says she sets about her work vigorously her arms are strong for her task wow here it talks about uh, the women the virtuous woman shira is one shira built the twin towns the upper and lower beth haron roughly 2 miles apart from each other they were strategically located near the borders of juda and the northern tribal districts along a major mountain range mountain pass whoever controlled the routes they controlled the whole canaan so this two cities upper beth haron and the lower beth haron both the cities were in a very strategic place dear people of god if you are building just don't build okay how to do this did it that's it no do it strategically amen god will give you the plan the vision how to go about it amen it may be tough but god is with you amen that is the great encouragement for you and me a huge very big task before her she might be run all the time day and night she never get a time to get you know rest she might not even sleep for so many days together from the foundation of the city to dig canals trenches sewers and ditches to build the great wall the towers around the cities it's not a easy task the people of god i can tell you if you are that kind of a person it will be going to tough and the task before you may be a huge big but remember one thing if you put your hand in on it definitely god will take you to finish it to accomplish the work that god has given to you amen so while you are giving birth to a vision when you are making your own dreams come true when you are doing what god called you to do you don't mind putting in the hard work and long hours when she had finished her city she didn't retire when she finished the first city she didn't retire she built another city and again okay i built two cities it's enough no she didn't stop she went for the third one and she gave the name after her own name the third city uzain shira shira became the mother of cities and her name lives on it in the scriptures through her cities the works of her hands god bless the works of her hands the bible tells us about two of shira cities upper beth haron and the lower beth haron right so where this place like as as a as we discussed it is in the strategical place right the location is very important location so we all remember in the book of joshua chapter 10 we could see there when joshua was you know fighting against the five amorites kings and other kings he was uh, asking the lord sons to to stay still yes and god answered his prayer the sun stood still okay you know which is that place and what happened after that we could read it in joshua chapter 10 and verse 8 it says because in uh, we could read the whole story in the chapter 
the people of gibeon made a treaty of peace with uh, joshua and his uh, all the military so on became their allies when this amorite king come against the gibeonites the gibeonites sent a word to joshua and joshua came in for help so when he came at gilgal so the word came to joshua so now he and all the army they are coming marching through the valley to help the gibeonites then verse 8 says the lord said to joshua do not be afraid of them i have given them into your hand not one of them will be able to withstand you the uh, the lord is promising joshua you are going to take the victory joshua chapter 10 and verse 10 it says god confused the enemy and sent them in a panic it was an easy victory for israel and then something happened they were all on the slope of a hill between two towns so now when the enemy were on the slope of a hill the amorites king and other kings when they were on the slope of a hill that is the upper beth haron and the lower beth haron which are the two cities the chira built so uh, this is happening after some 250 years that chira built that cities so till now till the time of joshua the cities were alive it was a fortified cities right so when the battle was at the doorstep of the cities of shira listen very carefully when they were in the slope so the god what he did god sent a hail stones from heaven so when the enemy was at the doorstep of the city of shira god sent the hail stones to destroy them it means god want to you know protect the cities that shira built it amen hallelujah then only joshua prayed the sun to stand still and god answered his prayer but uh, why did the hail stones happen because god wants to fight god himself want to battle against uh, this enemies because the place is very strategic place the place is very important place because there that place where shira built the cities so dear people of god if you are doing if you are building for the god if you are doing something for the god the god himself will battle for you amen and he is going to give you the victory and he himself will come down and battle on behalf of you hallelujah so god listen might be shira prayed lord let these cities be safe no enemy can overcome it she might have prayed when she was building the cities so god heard that prayer and answering even some 250 years god is answering what shira was prayed before 250 years amen hallelujah hallelujah what a mighty god you and i are serving it's not only that shira named the third city after herself like usain shira which means listen to shira so shira knows that god is answering god is listening her prayer that's why she able to build the third city when shira cities were in trouble god came to rescue god saved her cities today even when you are in a trouble when you are uh, whatever you are do, going uh, doing for god when those things are in trouble it may be your family it may be your uh, business or it may be anything but if you are doing it for the lord definitely the lord will come for your rescue amen hallelujah hallelujah so god saved shira's work we could have so many examples in the bible when even in you are in a travel to do something for the lord god is with you and he is going to help you and he is he he, he is going to with you all the times so god saved shira's work shira built on a firm foundation that is very important of course it physically it is a mountain she built the cities on the mountain and spiritually she trusted god amen 
her hope was upon the lord her hope was upon the rock jesus amen so sira built on the firm foundation sira city's lasted for century after her death 250 years after sira built her cities and god protected them and we not only that even in 1 kings chapter 9 and verse 17 2 chronicles chapter 8 and verse 5 we could read that we could see in the bible king solomon he was fortified the cities of shira by adding walls and towers there is a watch towers and bars to it he he didn't build the cities but he just added the walls so even today the foundations of the shira cities are visible in the palestinian villages amen so how god is faithful and how god is honoring the works of your hands amen in the new testament jesus says in matthew chapter 7 verse 24 therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock amen so shira heard the word of god and and she put it into practice the word of god and she physically built those cities on the hill on the rock matthew chapter 5 verse 14 it says a town built on a hill cannot be hidden and following the word says neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl instead they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven hallelujah so the word of god says that they may see your good deeds dear people of god you and i are in a mission you and i are in a commission let your and my good deeds bring glory to our heavenly father amen if we only we do as per the word of god if only we obey the word of god if only we hear it first hear the word of god and put in those words into practice and definitely our deeds will bring the glory to our heavenly father amen though the people who sees the work of our hands the people who sees the deeds of our hands they will definitely glorify our heavenly father amen so let's build on the firm foundations build your family build your city raise the wall build the kingdom of god amen whether it is a city whether it is a family or whether it is your business when it comes under attack god will fight for you from the heaven to protect god's work amen it's not your work it's god's work god using you as an instrument like as he did to shira shira it's not her own work it is the god's work she is just the instrument in the hands of god that's why god himself battled against those enemies the the those who came to you know destroy those cities today we may not we cannot say that whether the sun will stand still for me also as it did for joshua but let me tell you of course the sun will stand for you and me it's not the s u n but it is the s o n the immanuel he is going to with you and me and he is going to strengthen your hand and mind to finish the work to finish the call to finish whatever he has handed over to you and me he is going to with you till that time amen you and i are going to accomplish what god has called for called to do it amen so let's turn on the firm foundation let's build on the firm foundation that is upon jesus christ amen hallelujah hallelujah once the lord raised up esther to build the people to build the people 
to protect the people of jew here shira was raised up for that time to build a fortified cities to protect her future generation today you and i are called in the same time let's stand on the promises of god let's claim our own inheritance let's build the kingdom of god because the sun is standing for you and me may the lord bless you as you hear this word and put it into practice be strengthened in your faith because god is with you immanuel is with you he is going to accomplish the work already he started through you amen god bless you all stay blessed